six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> Just know that you are amazing. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? My name is Infamous Isaac, and I'm here with a video on the latest release of the Spider-Man movie series saga in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, we got Spider-Man. No way home. There you go. Not far from home. And man, am I here to talk about it? Because yo. Know, I know when I talked about the original two movies for the Tom Holland versions, I, I, I gave them praise, but like this movie, I'm gonna give it praise, bro. Oh my gosh. It, like, it, it made me want to go back and watch every single Spider-Man movie, even the ones that I already watched, and just go through and see all of them. Like, it, it, it was crazy. This movie, I, I'll tell you right now, bar none, was the best Spider-Man movie I've ever seen. If not one of the best MCU movies like ever, like I've ever seen so far, it was crazy. But uh, but before I start, I'm gonna just say right now, spoilers. You know, I'm uh, I'm gonna talk about it. I don't know how long I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna try my best to keep it short and not spoil too much. But I'm probably gonna talk for like 40 minutes about everything that I like. So you have been warned. But no way home. It's. It's crazy, bro. It's just crazy. And, like, the plot, as it goes, is literally... Um, at the end of the, the second movie, where Mysterio was fighting Spider-Man and all that, he kills himself because of the, the Stark technology. And Spider-Man is blamed for it. Which is, by the way, a crazy ending for the movie. It was nutty. And his identity was revealed in the process. Like, oh, Peter Parker. Spider-Man. Of course. And now... Everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows who uh, MJ is, or I guess in this universe, I never knew that her name was just Michelle Jones. <laughs> I thought it was Mary Jane, but you know who cares? Zendaya is M Mary Jane, or I mean Michelle Jones, MJ, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they know that she's his girlfriend. They know that Ned, the Don himself, the Willem Dafoe of the Spider-Man MCU trilogy, the Drip Don is also there helping him out and yeah now they know spider-man is peter parker and because of that unwanted like completely unwanted attention has been put onto the, the parker household and family and associates you know like uh happy aunt may mj and peter go 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 to aunt may's house and like helicopters are just swarming around them everything's going crazy and now Peter's like this sucks this sucks so bad all these people got dragged into my mess because I wanted to play hero this is terrible and he's like alright whatever we'll just try to keep going and now senior year he's he's a senior now in school and he's trying to apply to a college right like trying to apply to MIT or a Boston school a technology school you know and he's trying to go there with his girlfriend and best friend, you know, Ned and MJ. They all trying to apply together and see if they can all get accepted at the same time. And if not, they have backup schools to follow up on. And every school denied them. They're like, oh, we can't accept you because of recent events, you know, like because of the Mysterio controversy. And we have Jonah J. Jameson uh, reporting all of it on, on TV, which is sick, you know, like just seeing him there is fire. But, yeah, so now Peter's like, damn, this sucks, G, like, why, why, why they gotta suffer because of me? And so he goes over to Mr., Mr. Stephen Strange, a.k.a. Mr. Benedict Cumberbatch, or Benedict Cumberbatch, a.k.a. Dr. Strange. <laughs> uh, go government drop him, a real and fake person. <laughs> but he goes there, he's like, yo, can you do this for me? Can you, like, make everybody forget that I'm Spider-Man? And he's like, I mean, I guess. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> and so he's doing that, and he's like, oh, but don't let these people forget. But he keeps adding on names. It's not like one singular thing, like, oh, yeah, don't let these people forget it. And since it's altering the, the, the spell, it kind of, like, it kind of breaks. And if it's released, it'll destroy space and time as we know it. And so Strange is like, all right, well... It's nothing I can do about that now. Like, if we use this, it's over. So, I'm sorry about the college thing. I mean, you you did try to um, kind of, like, refute it, right? Like, you tried to make your case. He's like, 
I can make a case for myself? He was like, Peter, you're telling me you came to me first before trying to look up and see if you can do anything about it? He's like, you stupid mo- Alright, whatever. <laughs> Get out. And Peter's there just like, oh, wow, okay. Uh, well, I guess I'll just make a case for myself and my friends. He goes over to the airport. Well, actually, he calls one of his um, quote-unquote friends now, Flash Thompson. He's just like, yo, you're at the party for the, um, the college. Who, where, where's the, um, the administrator or whatever? And he's like, oh, she just went to the airport. Like, bet, thank you. And Peter goes over there in his Spider-Man suit, changes into his normal suit, goes over to her, and he's like, yo, girl, check me out, right? Let these two niggas in real quick to the college. He's just like, but why? He's like, because they're they're not Spider-Man, you know? I'm Spider-Man. They, they're, they don't have to be involved in this. And the next thing you know, Mr. Dr. Octavius, bro, Otto Octavius shows up. And he's just like, Peter, get boxed. And then they start fighting on a bridge, bro. It was fire. It was so fire. And then Peter saves, um, what's it called? The the admissions counselor. There I go. I think that's what it, well, what their name is. And then he beats Octavius by using nanotechnology and basically like Bluetooth pairing into his suit. And then the admissions uh, officer, or counselor, counselor, there you go. She's like, oh, Peter, you're dope. I'll make a case for all three of you. And he's like, wait, all three of us? But it's just two. And he's like, I'll make a case for all three of you. Now let me go. <laughs> and so she just hits the jet. Like, she, she hits the dash on both of them. And... Peter now has control of Otto's arms and so he brings them back to Strange and Strange is like alright so there's people coming through through different dimensions and they need to be stopped so capture all of them and let's go you know we're gonna send them back to the universe and uh, Ned and MJ are involved in this now they, they're they like oh Peter what's going on and he's like blah 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 and he tells them that and now they go to hunt the others he finds Oh man, actually at the bridge, I forgot to mention, Green Goblin shows up and destroys the rest of the bridge. Actual deviant, bro. But yeah, so now Peter goes over to a forest, he finds Sandman, Electro, he beats both of them. Sandman helps beat Electro, but then he's like, wait, what's going on? You're, I don't trust you. And then he goes to attack Peter, but gets sent into the, the chamber, the C-U-M chamber, you know. And so now, Otto, uh... Electro, and what's this dude's name? Oh my gosh. Sandman are there. Peter, or I don't, know, I don't remember. Was it Peter or was it Strange that finds Lizard Man? I don't know, but he's there now as well. And Peter goes to Aunt May because she calls him. And he finds Mr. Willem Dafoe, a.k.a. Uh, what's this dude's name? Norman, Os Norman Osborn. And he's like, Peter, please, I'm just trying to help. Like, I, I, I can't let this dude take over. And he's like, all right, but I'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you some help. And Aunt May is like, Peter, at least try to help these people, you know? That's all we can do here. That's all, that's what we do at Feast. And he's like, all right, let's do it. And he goes over to Strange and he's like, I want to help these people, Strange. He's like, no, let's just send them back. It's not our problem, you know? And then they start fighting. They start boxing each other. They actually go into the mirror dimension and they start literally boxing each other. It was crazy. But Peter wins because of geometry. And so now he goes back and he tries to help everybody. So he lets everybody out. And he gets all of them to help him. Uh, Lizard Man stays in the in the truck that they came in. While Willem Dafoe, Otto Octavius, Electro, and Sandman all go upstairs. Otto and... Well, Otto's more reluctant while Norman Osborn is actually, like, well, he's a scientist. I didn't know that, like, because I haven't watched um, the Spider-Man trilogy, the, the Sam Raimi one in Mad Long. But uh, Norman Osborn is helping them, or helping Peter. And so they're they're working on some serums. They're trying to get everything good, and they, they work on Otto's first to try and help him. And it works. He, he helps Otto, and now Otto's back to being a good person again. The same person that Peter met or Tobey Maguire met in Spider-Man 2 and so now Otto can help everybody else and they make a thing for Electro he puts it on and Electro's like hey buddy Sandman this doesn't feel right does it he's like 
if it gets me home so I can see my daughter, then it's, it's right to me. And he's like, nah, man, something just isn't right about this. And Peter, Norman, and Octavia are working together. And they go out into the, um, into the, the dining room, or the living room, because they moved from Aunt May's house to Happy's house since, like, they, they couldn't live there anymore. They were always being watched. And Peter senses something. So he goes out into, into the, 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 the living room. And it was such a sick, oh my gosh, it was such a sick, like, frame. The, the way that they were walking out the camera work was so dope because it was, like, it went from, like, the back from Peter showing, like, his back to the front, like, and the, the turn, it, it was so dope, because I think it was, like, one frame only, it was so sick, like, no jump cuts or anything, it was dope, but, yeah, cutting away to J Jonah J. Jameson, he, uh, he's outside of Peter's, um, or Happy's apartment, because he had somebody track down Peter, so he can finally expose Peter and Spider-Man for being a vigilante instead of a hero, for being a bad person, you know, and... While all that's going on, Lizard Man busts out of the, the truck and Peter uses his spider senses to notice something, a, a, a betrayal in the midst, or in the mist. And it was from Willem Dafoe, it was from Norman Osborn. But not because it was him himself, but it was because of Green Goblin. And Green Goblin comes out, because it's like a split personality type thing. And he's ready to attack Peter. But Peter, what's it called, like, webs him to the wall. And Otto, you know, he, he escapes, like, he leaves. Because he can't get caught. Like, he's still, like, to, to the people, he's still a villain because of what he did on the bridge. But he knows himself that he's not a villain anymore. Electro and Sandman bust out. They escape. And it's just speed, or, excuse me, not speeder. Uh, Pi oh, my goodness. Peter versus Willem Dafoe. AKA Spider-Man versus Green Goblin. And so now it's crazy. Literally this scene was awesome. The whole apartment thing was amazing, bro. It was nutty. I'm not even gonna talk about it, but just know, like, the, the Green Goblin to me was what Vulture was in the first movie, but like, way better. And not even because the Vulture was bad, just Green Goblin is just better. Like, it's, it's insane, bro. <laughs> it's so insane. But regardless, long story short, Aunt May gets caught in the crossfire between Green Goblin and Spider-Man's fight, and she's slowly losing her life, and she's telling Peter, like, listen, Peter, even though this failed, you did the right thing. All because you got set back a little bit doesn't mean that you can't do it. Keep going, because with great power comes great responsibility, and Tom Holland's will be like, <laughs> and then... Uh, the the SWAT come in, the SWAT team come in, and they they start shooting at Peter. And Happy tries to go help Peter, but he uh, what's it called? He gets uh, detained. There you go. Peter then leaves the apartment, the or at least the remains of it. And then this cool news report. Um, Jonah J Jameson at the scene. He's like, people listen. Everything that Spider-Man touches is left in ruin. When will we learn that this man is not a hero, but a vigilante? He only hurts. Lord save us from what can happen in his presence. Because the future is uncertain if Spider-Man's still around or something like that. And then we have uh, Ned and MJ at Ned's house and all of them. And they're just talking, cooperating, trying to figure out, like, should they press the button to send everybody back to their respective timelines or should uh, or should they just wait for Peter's signal and MJ's like we should do it and then Ned is like no let's just wait and then one thing I neglected to mention was that Peter took um Doctor Strange's um uh like ring thing for to open portals that he learned in uh, Doctor Strange and he gave it to Ned to hold on to you know and Ned had it on, and there's a little cameo, or not cameo, like, foreshadowing in the beginning, like, oh, hey, Doctor Strange, do you think, like, I can be a wizard or something? Because, uh, my mom, my grandma says that we have, like, um, powers in our family, you know, so, 
I, uh, I want to know. Like, I get some tingling sensations sometimes. But he he does, like, the motion a little bit. Like, he did a circle motion. Like, in the way that you you do to open a portal. And it opened a portal. And it brought out the one and only Andrew Garfield. A.K.A. the Amazing Spider-Man, Peter Parker. And he came out and he was like, oh, hey, um, why am I here? <laughs> and he comes out and everybody's like, yo, who are you? Are you Peter Parker? And he's like, yes. And he's like, are you our Peter Parker? No, I don't know who you are. <laughs> and they're just chilling there. They're trying to get him to prove like, yo, are you Spider-Man? Because he has a suit on, but they don't know. And he climbs on the wall. He gets a cowboy off of the wall. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> and then Ned tries again to try to find Peter since his whereabouts again are unknown and instead of summoning you know Tom Holland he summons Tobey Maguire and now they have both the other Spider-Men in the same room and this is what people have been talking about for months when No Way Home was announced and they heard that it was going to be like a multiverse movie other Spider-Men being in the movie the, uh, the live action ones was rumored since like the day that news got announced bro and the fact that it's actually here it's like honestly it makes a grown man cry if you love Spider-Man it's so fire but now they're like alright well can you help us find Peter and he's like where do you where do you think he would go then or Andrew's like where do you think he would go when he's stressed or trying to unwind and <clears throat> Toby Maguire was like I, I went to the Chrysler building while Andrew Garfield was like I went to the Empire State it has a better view he's like hey that's true you know and so they go to wherever he is. I don't know. I think it's like at the top of Feast or something. I have no idea. <laughs> but <laughs> he's there and he's crying. Uh, MJ and Ned go to hug him. And then he sees both other Spider-Men and he connects the pieces quickly. And he's like, bro, I think it's time for you guys, everybody, to go back. This is not my problem anymore. These people have hurt me beyond immeasurable belief. Or immeasurable belief, excuse me. So I'm done. Like, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. Ah, oh, man, unfortunate. I wonder if that's gonna... What's it called? Hopefully that doesn't... But regardless, yeah. And the Peter... Both Peters give give um, Tom Holland uh, a motivational speech. Like, they repeat the line, if great with great power comes great responsibility and all that. And now... They're ready. You know, like, Peter is motivated again. And... They're, they're just chilling, talking in the, in a, excuse me, in a lab, all three of them, and they're talking about, like, the differences between each other, how Tobey Maguire has natural webbing, while the other two have web shooters, and they're making the, the serums and antidotes and solutions for each of, or everybody who's afflicted, so Electro, Sandman, uh, Green Goblin and Lizard Man. I have no idea what his name is, but like, just I, I man, I, I, <laughs> my goodness. But yeah, now they have all the serums ready, and they're getting ready to fight. And it, Peter issues a a call to arms, or not a call to arms, a challenge, basically. Like, listen, I tried to help you all. Like, he calls Jonah J. Jameson. And he's like, yo, listen, I have something to say. And he's like, are you going to finally admit to your crime, Spider-Man? No. I'm going to say something for the people to see. To the people out there who've caused harm, I've tried to help you. And I still will try to help you. If you want to find me, come to the Statue of Liberty. And then you just see all three Spider-Men chilling at the top of the Statue of Liberty. Bro. And the conversation that they have here is hilarious. Oh my gosh, they're talking about all the villains that they fought, how Peter thought, or uh, excuse me, Tom Holland fought Thanos in space while Maguire th fought um, Venom and what's this dude's name? Oh my gosh, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Uh, Andrew Garfield fought a, a rhino. There you go. Like, yeah, so they're talking about the villains, they're also talking about the web shooting and all that. They're also talking about, like, man, you guys are all awesome. And Andrew Garfield's like, man, you guys sound so sick. I don't feel like I'm anything in comparison. And then Tobey Maguire's like, listen, man, re rewind it back to the fact that you think you're not awesome. 
You are amazing. You are literally amazing. You're Spider-Man, you know? And he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. And he's like, nah, man. You're amazing. Are you going to say it back? And he's like, oh, no, thanks, man. I, I, I really needed that, honestly. I really needed that. And then it was just so awesome. It was so cute. But, yeah, now all the villains show up. Green Goblin, Lizard Man, Electro, Sandman, they're all there, and they're ready to box, bro. He's like, or Electro is like, hand it over, Peter. Hand over the the thing. I'm going to destroy it. Don't make me a killer. Or don't make me a murderer. And then they start fighting. But since they're, since not all of them are used to fighting with other people, they kind of like get in each other's way. So since Tom Holland fought with the Avengers, he knows teamwork. And so he's leading them in the charge, you know. And this super scene, or super sick scene, where they where they all swing together off of the Empire, or, um, the Lib Statue of Liberty, was so fire, bro. Oh my gosh. And they all swing together, and then they go to fight all of them again. And they do. Well, Ned and um, MJ have the thing again that sends all of them back into their universes. And Ned accidentally opens the portal to bring back uh, Doctor Strange. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, um, uh, what's this dude's name? Sandman gets helped by Tobey Maguire. He finally gets reverted back into a normal person. Uh, Lizard Man gets helped by Andrew Garfield. He gets turned back into a normal doctor again. And it takes two people. It takes three people, actually, to go help Electro. It takes Octavius. It takes Tobey and Andrew as well. They all help each other to take down Electro when he turns back into a normal person. And then all that's left is Tom Holland versus Green Goblin. And when I tell you this scene is so fire, I mean it, bro. Like, I literally mean it. It's insane. Uh, like, in in, in the, the battle between uh, Green... Or not Green Goblin, um... Tom Holland versus Vulture in the first movie where there was like the the, the plane crash site. I thought that was so sick to me. Like it was so awesome because it was one to one fighting, bro. It was so dope. And here it was the same thing. It's, but instead of like the apartment, Peter is fueled by rage instead of the hope to help people. And he's ready to kill Green Goblin. But Tobey Maguire intervenes and he stops him. He's like, I'm not going to let you become like us murderers. And he stops Tom Holland, and Green Goblin stabs him from behind. Which honestly, uh, I'll talk about that later. But regardless, he uh, he's or Andrew Garfield throws the serum to Peter, or I mean Tom Holland, and he stabs, like, and I mean stabs, not even injects. He literally stabs Willem Dafoe in the neck to get rid of Green Goblin, and now he's back to being normal guy. And now, going up to uh, Doctor Strange, excuse me, he's like, well, Peter, um, this is not looking good. <laughs> Things are not looking good at all. We, we bent time too much to the point where now the seams of it are ripping apart. He's like, all right, Strange, then I got one request. Can you make it so everybody in my universe forgets that I'm Peter Parker, or like that Peter Parker like exists? He's like, yeah, that would fix the problem, but you'd lose everything. Like, this is more than just you, than everybody forgetting who Spider-Man is. This is everybody forgetting your existence, Peter. And he's like, I know, but it's the only way, right? And he's like, yep. All right, so long, kid. You are amazing. And he's like, thank you, Mr. Strange. She's like, call me Steven. He's like, thank you, Steven. He's like, oh, that's still weird. <laughs> And he goes to say his goodbyes. He goes to the Peters. He's like, I love y'all, bro. Y'all are fire. And they give each other a hug. And it's like, go get him, Tiger. And then he goes up to his girlfriend and Ned. And they, they give each other hugs. And Peter's like, listen. I don't have a lot of time, but... I'm gonna have to go. You guys are gonna forget who I am. But just know that I will find you guys. And I will start over. I don't care how long it takes. I will do it. And then... Zen Zendaya, as, or MJ, I mean, she's like, Peter, please, if you don't, I'm going to find you again. I'm going to know you're Spider-Man. And then that is like, you know what, nigga, you're the realest dude I've ever met. Stay strong out there, homie. 
and they say their goodbyes and Peter or Peter's memory or or other people's memory of Peter gets erased and now we get the end scene where Peter goes to where MJ works and she sees him and or she sees excuse me he sees her and Ned together right like not in like a relationship but just friends or not friends they do even know each other <laughs> it's more like oh you're going to MIT oh yeah I am how do you know he's like oh the Jackie you know the mask on all that he's like nice I hope to see you there He's like, yeah, look. And Peter's like, uh, hey, um, my name is Peter Parker, and um, I, uh, I would like a normal coffee, please. And he, he backs out last second because he realizes, like, the lives that they're living now are better without him. And that it's better to just start from zero and move on. And so he gets the coffee and he stares at MJ because, you know, this might be one of the last times he ever sees her. And he leaves. And she gets the impression like, huh, Will's good with him. But he goes back to the apartment, Aunt May's apartment, and he rents it out. And he starts living there now. Because now he has to get his GED because like he's not in school anymore. Which, you know, it's a, it's a subtle thing because you notice it in like the, the pile of, um, not luggage, more like moving equipment that he has. You notice like the GED study guide. Which is, you know, sick to me, honestly, it's dope. Like, it shows real-world consequence. But, um, yeah. So, Peter moves into the apartment. Aunt May is still dead, God her so. And he goes to her grave. And Happy's there. And he's like, how'd you know her? And he's like, an acquaint she was an acquaintance of Spider-Man. And I met her through Spider-Man. he's like, yeah. He's really a good person, you know. I, uh... Stay strong, man. Stay safe. It's like, you too, man. And, again, he goes back to his apartment. And he pulls up his phone, and he has the police, like, um, radio station and all that. And he puts on his Spider-Man suit that he sued or sewed himself. And he goes out through the window as a mm, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And, man, let me tell you, the ending for that movie was insane, dog. This movie was one of the best movies I've ever seen, like, Marvel Cinematic Universe-wise, and honestly, like, just movies in general. This movie was so awesome, like, I, I thought that, like, by the end of the year, like, I thought Dune was still going to be my favorite movie of the year, but nah, this movie is good, it? It's, it's hilarious, honestly. But, Spider-Man No Way Home, I'm giving it a 9, bro. I'm giving it a 9, and that, at its best, like the apartment scene and the Statue of Liberty stuff, it was a 10. It was wholeheartedly a 10. This movie was amazing, bro. I loved it. Like, I was crying a lot when I saw I was watching it. I was so hyped. I was, I was emotional. You know, it was awesome. And now, even now, like I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. This movie was fire, bro. And I cannot stress it or stress this enough. Like, I really recommend watching it. Or, like, at the very least, like, watching the first Spider-Man, like, like Homecoming, or watching Far From Home, or watching this one. Like, in no particular order, just watching, like, one of them at the least. Because, bro, these movies are so dope. They're so, so dope. I can't stress that enough. Like, my favorite parts are definitely, like, the Spider-Man, the three Spider-Men interacting together. Willem Dafoe being on screen. Otto Octavius being on screen. Um, just Peter and Doctor Strange interacting together. The consequences of, um, Peter's wish. The end scene. Uh, the bridge scene with, uh, with Octavius. Again, the apartment scene. The Statue of Liberty scene. I cannot stress that enough, bro. This action in the movie was so awesome. The 1v1s, like, Peter versus Green Goblin twice was so amazing. I cannot stress how much I love those two scenes. They were amazing. <laughs> you are amazing <laughs> but yeah like this movie honestly man like I I can't see myself like not saying that this is the best Spider-Man movie like to ever be released and people people have been saying too like this is even bigger than like Endgame because although it was built up with a bunch of different superheroes and movies and cinematic universes you know like this was built up over like 20 years like 
20 to like 20 something years you know like from the sam raimi trilogy to the amazing spider-man duology and now the homecoming stuff like this this was built up over decades you know like it's crazy so this, this is big you know like especially with how big spider-man is as a superhero like spider-man is important and he and he's impactful so this like i if you say like this is bigger than endgame i can understand why you would for me it's gonna take a little bit more time to like come to a conclusion on whether i think it is or not but like right now i can say it's on par with endgame if not like oh well, yeah like equal like this is big you know like people were hyped when endgame was coming out people were also hyped when this movie was coming out so it makes sense you know but like I'm, I'm trying not to get emotional because like yesterday i was getting emotional talking about it but spider-man really is like an icon you know he he impacts so many people as a superhero and as a person like peter parker just himself and it's it's just awesome seeing how like on the big screen he can affect so many people whether it's toby Maguire, andrew garfield or tom holland like spider-man as an icon like or as a, a person and hero is impactful you know because he's just a normal average guy anybody can be spider-man and that's the best part that's why there's so many spider-man and spider-woman anybody can be him it's just whether you choose to or not you know like so just seeing like how this trilogy concluded and the fact that i got to see like the first two catch up and then see the final one or at least for like this trilogy it really it really made my day honestly and i just can't like i can't be thankful enough to be able to do that you know so at the end of the day tony stark is like just barely number one for my number one superhero like ever spider-man for sure though will never be or ne will never not be in top three like spider-man is uh, he's amazing you know like uh, as corny as it sounds he's amazing and to me, he means a lot, you know. I literally have a Spider-Man pillowcase, but like, <laughs> he's he's dope. He's so fire. And I I just I'm so excited to see what happens next with Spider-Man. You know, heard rumors about a Amazing Spider-Man three with Andrew Garfield, so you know maybe that'll happen someday. The new trilogy is gonna be happening, or at least hopefully. And yeah, you know Spider-Man, he's awesome. He's amazing. He, he's here, you know. And I'm trying my best not to cry. I'm trying my best not to. He's. Um, I'm glad to be able to watch all three, and hopefully, I can watch the other three, or the other five Spider-Man movies, and share them with you guys. But that's gonna be it for me for now. This has been my reviews, or not? Not really review. I I keep calling it reviews, but they're not. <laughs> this has been me talking about Spider-Man, Far From, or excuse me, No Way Home. And yeah, I'll check you out. You have a great rest of your year. Peace.